So in this little video we're going to look at doing raindrops. Raindrops on the iPad. We're, going, we're doing it in Affinity Designer and it's really easy to do. A little step by step look at how you can make a raindrop. So first set up a blank document. Um, if you do it in points it might be easiest to follow. So one of the defaults that is set to points or you can set it to points yourself. PT. Use the default device. Now Place a background image for water drops to be placed on. And in this case I'm using a leaf. You'll find these on Unsplash or Pixabay. There's lots of pictures of leaves out there. Just drag one into the window and place it on your canvas. Lock that layer. And you can see the layer I've got is locked. Because you don't want to be moving the leaf. Pick up the ellipse tool and create an ellipse with a 5.6 point border. And you can see there, I've got the ellipse tool down the left hand side and on the right hand side um, I've set the border to 5.6 points. And you can see it there and dragged out an ellipse. And because I had it on there it was defaulting to white but now fill the ellipse with black. Select the Transparency tool and select the type Elliptical. You can see the, the, um, the uh, lines that go from the centre to the top and out to the side on there. Select the outer point of the slider at the top. Set the opacity to 100% and the circle will go black. Now select the central point and set the opacity to zero. So it's black on the edges and clear in the middle. Adjust the transparency by moving that little slider that you can see about halfway along, move it right out to the edge and that pushes the transparent bit right out towards the edge. Draw another ellipse inside the first one. Same again, we've got black there. Remove the outline from that ellipse. We don't want an outline around it. Fill the second ellipse with white. Select the transparency tool and apply a linear transparency this time. Not an ellipse but a linear transparency. Copy and paste the second ellipse and flip it vertically. Apply the Blend Mode Overlay to the copied ellipse. Shrink the copied circle just a little bit. Shrink it so it's slightly smaller than the one you copied it from. Just use the handles to move those in. Create another copy and shrink it to droplet size. Remove the transparency from this small ellipse. In other words, go down to the type and set it to none. So there's no movement in, no transparency tool being applied there at all. Add some Gaussian blur to this ellipse. You can see it's turned on there. And I've set it to about 47.0 pixels. So it's quite blurry. You can see it's gone out from that little white circle to quite a blurry smudge on there now, which is what you want. You can play with all these later to adjust them. Now select the outer ellipse and remove the outline from that one too. Apply an outer shadow to the outer ellipse using the numbers shown. Now you've got outer shadow um, set on there and you've got to click on the words out of shadows. No good just turning it on. You've got to click on out of shadow as well. And you can see the numbers down the bottom. The opacity is 50. Radius is 25.9. Offset 25. Intensity 29. And the angle is 90 degrees. Fairly straightforward. Create a copy of the small white blurred ellipse and paste and rotate it. So you're gradually increasing your number of layers there. And you can see it's up the end there now. 
I haven't got the frame around it, but you can see it there. Repeat the same thing down the other end. Now I've hardly got that one showing, and I've done that on mine on purpose. You may have, um, you may, you may want to do it slightly differently. Now convert the first small ellipse that you put on the right hand end. Convert that to curves, and there's a reason for doing this. It's very clever. Select the node tool and bend the ellipse ellipse into shape. You can see I'm bending it so that it follows the circle of the main ellipse with the ends with the edges curved inwards. And you repeat that for the other end. Adjust the opacity for the outer shadow. Now you can see I've got the fill opacity is 50% and that's the outer shadow is ticked on there and you can see the um, the numbers down the bottom that we set but I'm adjusting the opacity downwards so it's not a hard shadow it's a softer shadow that you can just see the leaf through and you can adjust this to suit your own requirements. Now this is a very big drop at the moment as you can see so from this point on you can begin to adjust your shapes and effects. Now you might want to smooth some of those edges out, you might want to give it a bit more gloss, a bit more diffusion with the Gaussian blur. Now group all the layers together except the leaf and resize and reposition them. You don't want to be trying to drag each one around. Group them all into, put them all into a group and you can even give it a, a name if you like, Raindrop 1, Raindrop 2. But you can see on the left hand side there, I've just moved the raindrop onto the leaf instead of a big blob in the middle of it. Now your raindrop is ready. You can replicate it and resize it as you like. So you can select it, copy and paste it, enlarge it, reduce it, make tiny little drops. You can even change the shape. And there's your finished raindrop sitting on a leaf. It's rather a large raindrop, but it might be a very small leaf. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it when you do.